me up and the stone's yours. Give me your word that once you leave the pit, you will not lay a finger on me. You have my word. Uh. The stone? Now, now, Miss Croft, you gave me your word. Come now, Lara. Lara, you promised. Relax, bitch. Following video will contain the junk ramblings of an angry and confused person. If you haven't seen my previous floor reviews, it doesn't really matter this time. Heh. <laughs> Jesus. Tomb Raider Chronicles is the worst classic Tomb Raider game I've ever played. I could do the usual bin, tell you that it was released in 2004, like every system ever at the time, maybe give you some facts about the development cycle, dying little changes that have been made between Last Revelation and this one. The Chronicles doesn't really try. Fact, I'm not even sure why this game exists. At all. In an interview with Core Designs and Eason have done by the Tomb Raider of Core Designs website, he expresses that the team was experiencing some burnout with the yearly release cycle by this point. Haven't eaten, drinking, and breathing Tomb Raider for five years straight now. There's only a matter of time before I died. Made its way onto the lineup, I go while you play Tomb Raider Chronicles. The more you realize that Last Revelation was definitely supposed to be Lara's last hurrah. Plus, wrong you ask? It looks exactly the same as other games you say? Well, son, why don't you come over here? Listen to a little story. It's all about how my life got twisted upside down. So if you could just kindly take a minute, you just, you just sit right there. I'll tell you why I do the things I do with my life. Our fifth installment brings some new changes to the table. One that's like hype is shit, and others that are baffling, frustrating, and or confusing. To change that stands out most from Team Waiter Chronicles is definitely the game's performance. It's worse. Much worse. It's littered with bugs and shit that just shouldn't exist. The older games had their bugs, sure, but Tim Later the Fifth has broken wired into its DNA. Object draw distances arbitrarily, cutscenes aren't polished, model consistency is forgotten about. Controls don't work as intended. The game crashes when loading. For a game running on the exact same engine as its predecessor, it's almost baffling how bad this game's performance is. It's not as broken as some other games. But it was a little disheartening to see the sudden drop in quality. Looking at various scenes from the game, it looks like just another adventure on its surface. But almost everything from this game is much worse than The Last Revelation. Or any of the classics for that matter. Even worse than 2 meter 1. Alright, let's run through it. Like the last game, Chronicles once again forgoes the mansion stage, and instead drops you straight into the main story. The main story is Lara Croft is still dead, and the butler, in our hearts. along with two old friends, remember me? I'm gonna run this stupid joke into the ground. Fancy meeting you here, princess. Fuck you. The League of Extraordinary Old People decide to recount some tales of lurid honor. Her memory fawn croc is still out in the desert digging for Lara's corpse. But these guys think it's a lost cause. What this means is that the game is going to take place over four separate scenarios. One that's like a typical stage of Tomb Raider. One where Lara loses her shit, again. One where combat is entirely ignored to focus on exploration. 
and one that focuses on tactical espionage action. Even though this game is clearly a mandated cash grab, I respect the team for doing something different. Not the classic Tomb Raider games offer the exact same experience, which is a good thing. It's just unfortunate that this new direction utterly fucked over the game. The first scenario of the men recount is the time Lara was an asshole in Rome, searching for the Philosopher's Stone, and how she bested the Flanderized duo of Larson Conway and Pierre Dupont. Two people that sort of gave Lara a hard time before, but are now essentially just dumb and dumber. Idiot. What does the cowboy hope to achieve with this mindless firing? You were gonna let this guy fuck you? Now what's a man gotta do to get that sort of attention from you? If that's the sort of attention you want, Larson, you're well on your way. Sounds like fun. I've got the cash, but I don't deal with the monkey. <laughs> well, now that ain't polite for a lady. Even if the monkey has the mercury stone. You were gonna let this guy fuck you? When I first saw these two, I thought this was a prequel scenario, the Tomb Raider 1. By the time I finished Rome, I had no idea what kind of alternate universe I was in. If you remember in Tomb Raider 1, Lara murders both of these assholes. However, in this Rome scenario, Lara murders both of these assholes. Pull me out, and the stone's yours. Give me your word that once you leave the pit, you will- Andy San Him even admits they didn't refer back to the Tomb Raider once trip when making this part of the story. But anyway, the tutorial can be found directly to your left from beginning the realm stage. It returns to having real-time explanations while you move as instructed. Lara will usually begin talking when walking over the metal square, and our explanations most likely won't overlap with each other since they'll usually wrap up by the time it takes her to perform the action. The corner shimmy ability is properly explained here. Rope swinging practice is completely ditched even though it's utilized in game. The ability to open up four panels isn't demonstrated again. The bar swinging mechanic doesn't get introduced here, and the tightrope walking ability, which is slow as sin, is introduced to the arsenal. I don't understand the obsession with making actions slow and classic Tomb Raider. Swimming above water is slow. Shimmying left to right, a mutters, is slow. Climbing his flow, pushing blocks is fucking slow. Now I have two more new animations that have to be pace killing endeavors. I say minus because Lara also has a new searching animation whenever you look in the cabinet on a shelf. She'll click in place, look under, then up, then in the middle. It takes slightly over 8 seconds to run through this animation for the shelf and 11 seconds to run this ship for the cabinets. Sometimes for nothing. Then the designers will shove like six of them next to each other. I don't bitch about ladders or swimming because I'm either usually not subjected to it for long periods of time, usually, or just go underwater to rectify the problem. Why can't you make more things like that other new animation you're not telling me about? This time around, you can exit shafts in a new way. Crawl to the end of the hole, hit a button, and flip out of the space in a stylish manner, avoiding the clunky scenario of having to turn around and drop down, then release. They didn't tell you this, by the way. I figured this out by complete accident. <laughs> These loops are getting pretty old. Just ready for this section to be over. What are you doing? Okay, I fucking hate this game now. Okay, thank god she can't do it here. I was gonna be fucking mad if she could do it here. 
This animation cleans up and smooths out the gameplay by cutting out the slow turnaround and hanging play. This shit just adds more flow breaking sections. The cabinet searching isn't terrible and it's like one but they usually appear in groups of like four or six. Then it's just waiting for Lara to execute animations before you can carry on. Anyway, the tutorial ends when you loop back around to the start of the stage so you can walk out and get going once you think you're ready. But you're not ready. The realm segment consists of a small city area, the marketplace, and another coliseum level. Design this time around is a bit more compact. There's technically 13 stages total. But really, each stage is about two or three main rooms linked together with hallways and shafts. These first three realms sections combine equal to space and like one of the mid-game levels in Tomb Raider, one and a half, masks the drastic reduction in stage size and kinda sorta make you feel like you're spending the normal amounts of playtime in this game. The designers opted to do two things vastly increase the number of cutscenes relative to the amount of gameplay and attempt to outcon Tomb Raider 3 when it sees fit. Now compiled together, there's about an hour of cutscenes in this game and maybe 45 minutes of gameplay in each section, save for the final bit, which maybe accounts for like an hour or so, and that's being real generous. If you're not trying to figure out what to do next, then you're watching Dumb and Dumber act like pinheads. Admiral Russia talked about his country. Irish priest running his mouth with one-liner for a stereotype not shutting the fuck up. Don't get your knickers in a twist. Fuck you! The amount of interruptions to the gameplay was absurdly high for the amount of content on offer. The writing wasn't anywhere in the ballpark of good enough to justify this, and to make it worse, you can't skip most of them. Putting it into context, a glitchless speedrun of the streets of Rome, where everything is done the way its developers intended, amounts to 9 minutes and 5 seconds. Directly going from puzzle, the puzzle, as fast as they could, that's what they clocked in. 4 minutes and 28 seconds of that speedrun was watching unskippable cutscenes, that's... And, last revelation, we'll show you where to go, and nothing is particularly hard. So unless you make a ton of wrong turns, Nearly half your time here will be spent watching Dumb and Dumber talk about how they're going to use Lara for their own ends. Come, let's get off this roof, and I will buy you a milkshake. Should buy yourself a better game, asshole. The streets of Rome will have Lara, the scope, and revolver for puzzle solving. And the beginning of the markets will return the crowbar to Lara, since you're just going to lose everything you find and start fresh in the next flashback. Ammo, conservation, isn't a huge deal in Chronicles. He can be very liberal with your gun, though there's not much to fire at. There's someone knowing my sty take the place of scarab enemies and some bats that take the place of the locusts. There's dogs, this fuckhead, and statues. That's huh first thing in the market is finding this climb wall above wall, figuring out you have to shoot this thing in the eyes before it murders you, and this mini boss. You're given some magnum ammo right before you find the statue, and you're given a shotgun right before this mini boss. So at least the game is telegraphing itself correctly. The Colosseum following the market is a really short linear or fair. You avoid a pitfall, you shoot some assholes with swords, some lions, cheat another statue, then finish your first flashback. 
The most difficult thing here is the puzzle where you need to raise a key with the crank. A run over do it. Since the keys likes to pick and choose when it's invisible to you, you have to learn that it takes three crane, so they handle before you can start to run. Lara gets the Philosopher's Stone, and the men begin to recount another time in Russia. Really, the realm stages are just meaty core. Mediocre? Nothing super terrible about it, but it's only downhill from this point. The tale, the spear of destiny begins in this warehouse. Lara voiced the comical attempts of Captain Claudius Smasher and breaks into a submarine. The player just has to spy cabinets, grab a key, kill the guy, and then head outside where she'll find A.B. Muriel Russia and a bad guy I don't think the writers did their basic research of Russian military ranks. Ranks in general. Promoted me to commander. Is it not fitting to board before the admiral? Commanders don't exist in the Russian Navy, and the rank of admiral outclasses commander by five in the U.S. Navy. Hey, you wanted to shove more story in my face, so I'm gonna be a little more critical since you think it's so important that I can't skip it. You gotta search all the lockers. 4. Like this power couplet that you plug into a wall. That's the last puzzle before you're watching more cutscenes of Lara boarding the sub. Once she's in this, up she's captured and stripped of her firearms again. This leads to some practical thinking moments for Lara. Like ripping off these pipes for her crowbar and using it to knock out a guy. You might get stuck here because the pipe won't catch your eye right away. And you might not even try to sneak up behind this cut. So, threatening. In order to sneak up on targets, Lara Lee needs to use the walk function no. Nothing else matters in this position. Behind certain enemies, hitting the action button will let Bara use a context-sensitive action. This was something I was a little surprised that worked. You have that moment of, why doesn't Largest use the crowbar as a weapon? Then it turns out she can. Bravo, game. It's really the only standout moment, though. The stage begins with the trend of reducing exploration to a series of narrow hallways and corridors. It might change the coat of paint, but it won't change the fact that the spaces you explore are super compacted. The sub is just the level designers hoping you get lost in a maze-like environment in order to stretch out the playtime. To make sure that's the case, they'll be sure to hide the way forward in sneaky ways. There's a grate you gotta pull down with a sneaky handlebar on it. And look at the first look at my new most hated addition to the game, the fixed camera. For now, it's just used to show this bathroom in the set direction. But don't worry, I'll let you know when they start doing kunti things with it. Just know that you can't go in the first person view when these fixed camera sections pop up. You run around looking for suit pieces, and Mara goes deep sea diving in an underwater suit. Which looks cool as fuck, right? So it turns out, all you do is like, swim to a hole, pick up a thing, and then swim back to the ship. From here, the bad guy is killed by the spear, and Lara needs to make an escape from the sinking sub. Here's where things begin to fall apart. There's no time limit or anything. Here, no sense of urgency. You just gotta go back through the same geometry as before, only with more hazards. Running through corridors was fucking boring the first time, so adding electrical hazards that make you explore even slower is the obvious solution to making it fun. Except! Wait, no! No, it's not and you finally get to Admiral Russia, 
He tells you to find some oxygen to escape through the pods. Now, everything's pretty fucked up and busted, but the way you need to progress is by shooting a dent adventure up and out of your view. Like, the great earlier, the model itself correctly telegraphs that something can be done to it, but the camera makes sure you won't see it. It comes in and war at a high angle in this room so you're likely just to run past all the destruction back to this locked door. After all, you've just gotten the key. You passed by it earlier, so hey, must be the way. Since you can't progress here due to this electrical wire, you can end up slowly traversing hallways for a way to shut down the power. Or worse, Try and pick up a Desert Eagle in electric water so you can try shooting the wires with the scope attachment. It goes one Kunti step further by showing you a locked door you can't open, potentially making you look around for a key that doesn't exist. There's like three things to do in this section. Getting in the end for a key, unlocking a door to shut off the power, and getting the oxygen. It's the level layout and camera work that'll make you spend far more time in this bland space than you really should. Next flashback sees the old Ben recounting some time they spend with teenage Lara. No, not that time, but the time she was a survival horror protagonist. The good thing about this section is a decision not to give Lara a new kind of firearm. She goes through this flashback completely naked. Some of the monster design is also pretty neat. That about wraps up the positives. This horror section was the first time I found myself noticing a step down in art direction. Both this game and Last Revelation are pretty blocky, but the Last Revelation made up for it was some nice lighting. Rome, the sub, the gallows, and the building are lit pretty flat. It doesn't give the lighting engine as much of a chance to show off. Anyway, we have about three puzzles standing in the way for completion of this area. Grabbing some pieces for a slingshot, lighting a tree on fire, and setting a heart in a hole. That's about it. This will be stretched out with confusing vertical level design of spooky corpse Dick Gaps, an Irish priest. What was in the hole? Nothing, you idiot. The area is fairly compact, so being obscure is the name of the game. Lyra needs to make sure it over the slanted wood thing, so you have to make one of the most awkward jumps I've seen a classic Tomb Raider. The only reason things are like this is so that your eyes won't track the way forward immediately, making you waste time exploring other areas. Next to the creepy mall baby, there's a rubber band in the old barn, and a wood piece in the crash site. When you make this thing, shot, you're like, the fuck do I need this ship for if I was mashing buttons next to the offload Three new models. I don't think I would have found out when I needed the slingshot for you gotta like shoot through the space here. There's nothing in the level design that tells you a slingshot is needed in the spot. So Laura breaks everything, grabs a torch, and lights a tree on fire for the heart of the spooky corpse, which she places in a hole. This leads her to the labyrinth, which is like the most inappropriate name for a very linear stage. There's three switches and no other clues around, so you're stuck trying all six combinations, hoping something happens. When you finally do the correct combination and open a door, invisible skeletons are suddenly behind you, forcing you to navigate this church in a very specific way. But the camera also prominently highlighted a dead skeleton but what you actually need to do is interact with this piece of level geometry which the game definitely told you about earlier so I don't know why I made this complaint the first time uh, 
okay? But once you find the bone dust under the weird bench thing, you've killed the skeletons and entered the main section of the labyrinth. It looks super promising, right? Finally, a complex tomb raiding challenge. All you have to do is like, follow the one trail, flip a lever, then pick up the Tome of Eternal Darkness as you keep following the one path. Then you like follow a white light that leads you to the exit. Where's the rest of it? Fuck if I know, kid. Due to the buggy nature of the game, Mara and the priest briefly switch places mid-conversation. It has protective symbols. Maybe you could use them. And then we begin the old mill. You set a torch down and make these rock-throwing assholes cut their shit out. Then make a quick flip upwards to grab some chalk. Dora will draw her alchemy circle on the floor. Then Headless Horseman Ripoff attacks Lara Priest, will save her, and get captured instead. So in order to save him, she needs to stop running the water in front of the mill at the demand of the Headless Horseman. Because as everyone knows, ancient spirits can't cross running water. Lara agrees to save the priest as he makes his sassy remarks to the ghost. So here's some more up to use level design. You need to find an old coin underwater before Squidward Tortellini drowns you. Then put it in a cage so you can trap it and let the mole people eat it. The logic is that the thing is swimming around the coin, so it must be attracted to the coin. Good luck with that then. You head into the mill and discover Lara can swing off bars. As soon as I saw that thing, my exact words were, You know, this for Tomb Raider Legend, I could just swing off the bar. I don't know what they expect, but like, oh my god! Oh my god, she's doing it! We legend now, boys! Yeah! Yeah, puzzle using this thing is like a bit kunti. You need to crank this wheel twice to open a timed door that will shut in a few seconds. Not at once, or you won't make it. Not three times, or you won't make it, but twice. Once you learn by trial and error, bats assault you through the door to goad you into running. Even if you follow the path, you get looped into the water and then you have to do the puzzle again. You're supposed to jump up right before the slide to stop the windmill. But the hope is that you'll panic so that playtime will uh, stretch out. Then you got to figure out that you need to return back to the start so you can head down a side that this takes you to the rooftops where you can enter another building with the water wheel switch inside. After that, the section is done and you get another long ass cutscene you can skip. The final section is a building owned by Von Croy. The boys are reminiscing about the time Lara thought she was a good stealth game. Lara's after the iris that Von Kroc in Cambodia, so she employs the likes of local black guys at the gate. You know, from Tomb Raider Legend. That's it. This will be a long trip otherwise. I forgot you were such an optimist. He was actually in this game first. And oh boy, does he want you to know he's a black guy? I'm on the case. That's your job, girl. I ain't no X-ray vision superhero. Okay, you've been a bad girl. Fuck you. This final flashback is easily the worst section of the entire game. Mara was not designed for stealth gameplay. But I won't stop the devs from trying. They're gonna start in some vents because running through a maze-like series of bland hallways was so much fun the first time. There was a gap in particular that gave me a lot of trouble. I just kept running to my death. But after 14 meter games in a row, I knew the timing of my jumps couldn't be that bad. Turns out Lara just got stuck on the edge, rendering her unable to jump after the fun times in the event shaft. You come up to this great you know you've got to shoot, 
If the fixed camera will make sure you do it from a distance because you still can't enter first person mode when the camera is like this. Even though you can fight, enemies Lara only has this submachine gun, meaning her ammo is actually limited. Getting spotted by a guard, it will spawn more enemies draining your resources, so combat isn't encouraged. Instead, you'll be using chloroform on guards. You absolutely need to run past. There are some workers that won't pose a threat and ask Lara not to shoot, and you actually need to do this on a certain guard who advance through a certain door. This is where the bucky nature of Chronicles cutscenes won from comically broken to actually broken. Say I held up the lab guy into an unskippable cutscene that's... In ended, I died, I wasn't being attacked before this cutscene triggered. Things were relatively calm, but then for some reason, mid cutscene, I was shot at and then killed completely out of my control. I didn't think out hunting Tomb Raider 3 was a possibility, but you did it, Chronicles. Here's to you. After watching and getting shot in the same cutscene again, I finally got to the next section. You need to discard your weapon, because reason. This leads to another insanely cunting moment of Tomb Raider Chronicles. You gotta knock out a guard and get a password for the bathroom. Plus, inside, the stupid fixed camera will make sure you can't use your first person view to look around. Then know where you have to go up from here? Yep. I'm honestly too fucked up to yell at this point. I've been drowning this all out with vodka pudding. But this is just a ceiling crack. Texture. In the roof. Ceiling crack. Equals events. Apparently. Then you need to climb up a long shaft and make a leap of faith behind you. You know, I wouldn't make that mistake if I could fucking look around. How about when you need to run from the sniper with a fixed point of view? Wasn't that fun? Even the puzzles that should be clever are fucking stupid because you have to learn by trial and error. Like, the one in the room with, like, the floor that's on fire. Touching the very normal looking floor set C1 fire. Good luck not dying to that on your first time. You gotta lure a guy to shoot the water tank so that doesn't happen. But you like... You need... You need to telegraph that the floor is lethal the first time, you fucking asshole. Then there's a treasure chest puzzle where opening the wrong one murders you. You have infrared glasses. Ugh. I can spot traps. So after dying to a chest, I thought this would help me out. It doesn't? You know, this is an action-adventure title for a reason. This is an MGS. It's just a test of my fucking patience. You steal the iris and Von Croy puts the base on red alert as you try to escape. So you'll spawn and be shot dead unless you immediately look up to your right. There are some gaps you won't make unless you know how the geometry is going to be affected. After it's blown up, then the game introduces another way for you to be fucking confusing. The grapple gun. Grapple gun. The gun shoots rope for you to swing on. Fuck if you know how it works on very specific pieces of bubble geometry. So I'll save myself some time and say none of them are telegraphed well. Tried swinging to the shaft because that's made sense. Turns out you gotta like swing on a wall that doesn't look, climb about, backtrack through a fixed camera angle that doesn't let you look for you, 
are, oh my god, is it over yet? Fighting Sam Jackson in the suit only to find bullets don't kill him because he's like a cyborg. Then you have to flood the place and you don't flood the place. Why am I still playing this game? Did you know going through this vent is like the way you need to go? Duh. Then you gotta like lead Sam Jackson robot to a spot so you can poison it with gas. Why does the robot need air? He got door keys while doing all this shit and then hang glide away. What the fuck is this game? I'm glad Lara was dead for this one. If she saw how the Breakfast Club ruined her game with their shitty story, she'd have them all executed. This is a game that gets progressively worse the more you play it. Rome starts out medio, bland. The sub gets you tired of the visuals, and the level design is intentionally disorienting. The Sleepy Hollow sections rely on Kunti tactics to stretch out simple levels. And the Irish section is just broken and Kunti at the same time. The best thing about this game is probably the level editor that came attached to the PC version. The actual game, however, is fairly bad. It was clear the team's heart wasn't in it anymore. It was time for a change. Classic Lara could exit the stage with four good attempts under her belt. Even if one of those attempts wasn't particularly great, now she could evolve with the times. On the next generation of hardware. Oh.